As dusk falls on a city that is no stranger to extremism and to its shadowy threat, hundreds fill a university hall. There's been a lot of hype, a lot of buzz about what they've come to see. A movie that promises to shed an extraordinary light on what the road to radicalization really looks like. It's something that our community really needs to hear. This topic's not usually uh, talked about enough. Homegrown terrorism. It's a topic so sensitive, so loaded, and here especially, so scrutinized. Buna Mohammed knew making a movie about it could be controversial. The Toronto filmmaker also knew it would put his faith and twisted interpretations of Islam under the spotlight. For the first time since he released the film, more than a dozen police officers are in attendance, including the RCMP and CSIS. It's not an ordinary Friday night at the movies. That's a lot of police officers. There's a lot of them, but there's a lot of me too. How so? I mean, I, I, this is something that I'm passionate about, and I'm not ashamed of it at all, and I feel like it's something that for me is really a goal that I have in life, which is to use art to really influence change in society. The West should not feel safe. We are coming for you. With its haunting soundtrack and slick production, Tug of War is compelling. A rip from the headlines tale of two young Muslim men who set off to wage holy war. So you're just going to leave, just like that? Yeah, I've been waiting for the green light. This is my chance. Buna plays Khalil, an ex-convict who is trying to put his life back together. But his family rejects him. Bah. Nadaf. So does his community. It only be for one night. And Khalil dives into despair and religious delusion. You said you wanted to live amongst the Muslims. Here's your chance. Take it. His only refuge, his friend Anas, who is intent on joining extremists in the Middle East. These people are misled, they're misguided, a lot of them are vulnerable, a lot of them feel like they're on the fringe of society, they don't have proper support, their families may not be there for them, some of them are coming out of, you know, drug or alcohol abuse or even prison, and so trying to put those issues in the forefront and explain to people that there are things that we can do along the way to help prevent issues like this in the future, I think is something that's very positive. And if he don't love Allah, his love will always be flawed. An award-winning poet and self-styled Islamic preacher. Allah is testing everyone from Buna often relies on hip hop to spread the word about his faith but he says he was inspired to delve into a darker side too to enlighten and prevent young muslims from losing their way we know that it does affect our community and we should be proactive the reality is the repercussions are very large and we as a community can't ignore it any longer the whole thing is a little bit confusing i'm saying like Who's right, who's wrong? The film has been screened in several cities in Canada and the U.S. already, but resonates here because it hits so close to home. A cluster of young men from Calgary left Canada to fight alongside ISIS in the last three years. And there's Damien raiding the pantry in the fridge again. One of them, Damien Claremont, was Christian Boudreau's son. I'm going to call the police. Christian says the son she knew disappeared into a vacuum of hate and is believed to be dead. She has started a program to fight radicalization by talking about it. She says the movie speaks to the consequences of remaining silent. I think we need more tools like this, more videos impactful in the side of emotion again, because it shows some of the truth, sheds some light on some of the truth of what we all go through, what we all experience emotionally, and how easy it is to twist from here to here. It's not that anybody starts out as a bad person. Oh, Khalil, come in. The doors into the minds of religious radicals, experts say, are often sealed shut, hard to penetrate. The movie tries to construct a peek inside by drawing from real life stories here. The Calgary group all attended this street front mosque and lived together in apartments above. They shared two apartments, if I'm not mistaken. Sheikh Naveed Aziz took over the mosque after six young men took off. But he did counsel Farah Sheerden, who he says was tied up in drugs and gangs. He says Sheerden abruptly shut him out and disappeared. This is a message to Canada and all the American Tawaghi. We are coming and we will destroy you. Sheerden resurfaced months later in this diatribe against the West. We are going for you, Barack Obama. The West should not feel safe. We are coming for you. Mr. Obama, we are coming for you. Khalil's rant in the film is eerily similar. 
He's run into them so many times. The character was developed with Sheikh Navid's help. He also drew from the anti-radicalization work he is now immersed in. I didn't know how to approach the subject, so rather than taking the academic route, I had to take the hands-on route, interacting with these people, studying their own stories, and that's where I've learned. So now I know what to look out for and what are some of the you know, instinctual feelings I have inside that I should pay attention to when I interact with these individuals. I don't consider myself to be an extremist. One of those individuals is a young man we'll call Kaleem. Kaleem asked us to hide his identity and disguise his voice to avoid harassment. We were introduced to Kaleem at the movie screening. He attended the same mosque, had met some of the young men who left to fight with ISIS. Yes, I have seen these individuals at the mosque, but I, I mean, I was never friends with them. Kaleem's story is a tangled one. He claims police questioned him, followed him for months after he was accused of trying to recruit a court sheriff to join ISIS in Iraq. He says he was prevented from traveling to Iraq, all over allegations he denies. Kaleem has not been charged or convicted of any terrorism-related offense. Did you ever have radical thoughts? Define radical. You tell me, like you saw the film. Do you relate to any of those characters, the young men in the film? Relating to characters and uh, having strong opinions are t uh, two different things. Uh, for example, I do not support uh, Western uh, intervention, uh, military intervention. Uh, I do not support uh, Western military intervention uh, in the Middle East. Like, do you sympathize with the young men who left to go to wherever they went? No, I I understand where they're coming from. You know, but do I sympathize? No, I don't. Kaleem is still under a watchful eye, says Sheikh Navid. But what made you worry about him in the first place? Just because I realized how impressionable he was. And when someone's very impressionable, that is something that is very, very dangerous. Because it shows that they lack uh, to critically think for themselves. So whatever someone feeds them is what they're going to take in. We know that as long as his online viewing is, is monitored and, you know, he tries to engage with the Muslim community from time to time, that's what made me feel safe about it. Kaleem and his vulnerable mindset is an example of a gray area where outrage against foreign policy and a moral impulse to do something can explode. We've been monitoring certain suspicious online activity from potential radicals across the country. Buna insists his laptop, film is a work of art meant to provoke, activity, not provide all the answers. And he says despite some suspicious criticism, suspicious the reaction has been overwhelmingly positive. We saw some suspicious activity and found out where it was coming from. Even from police, despite the fact officers in the film come off as caricatures at best. Do we make mistakes as police officers? Absolutely. The RCMP won't comment on the content of the film itself, but Calgary Police did. Sergeant Paul Dunn runs a new anti-radicalization program in Calgary called Redirect. He says the movie is an accurate portrayal of people in his program. The fact a Muslim is behind it makes it that much more credible. Absolutely, absolutely. The, the, the grassroots stories or the grassroots initiatives have an immense amount of value. So as, as I've said before, Redirect is a piece of a puzzle. We, we need those grassroots initiatives to, to, to come up and tell the story from the perspective of those communities. <laughs> that perspective makes for a dramatic finale. Buna's character ends up leaving and ends up racked with guilt and remorse. Ya Allah, I don't know how I got into this mess. And then, back home, his mother learns he's dead. Is that hard to watch? Yep. Sorry. That last scene? Seeing him break down and cry like that was hard. Because you always wonder what's going through their heads for real compared to what's being projected when they're over there. And seeing the guilt and the damage it's done to how many people? That part. Does it makes you think of what your son might have been thinking? I wonder, I'll always wonder, I'll never know the truth. Not yet anyway.
because I, unless I hear it from him, which I can't. So yeah, I mean, the movie went really well, I think. The truth like, and Buna's approximation of it remains elusive. Buna readily admits he doesn't have all the answers, just an intent to raise questions in the hope of finding them. Joanna Romaliotis, CBC News, Calgary.